Welcome back to the Lime Bites channel. Now today we're going to be going down the um, route that I've done in previous videos where I look at how to make getting on the bank either more accessible to you physically during the colder months, spring, other times of year, but also how I'm going to try and help you save a bit of money as well. So I want to particularly caveat this video right from the beginning as for a lot of anglers out there this will be very very relevant but to some it won't be relevant at all. So before you go any further with this video just take this with a pinch of salt that this is for a specific audience rather than the majority of anglers as a broad brush. So what we're looking at is the type of angler that fish mainly day ticket lakes. We're not particularly looking at the campaign anglers or members of syndicates where actually there's very few members and there's still a good level of fishing etiquette where actually you all are aware of different people fishing different swims, baiting different spots and you're not likely to end up trying to jump in them. What we're looking at are those day ticket anglers, all right? So your average Joes, the guys that manage to get out once or twice a month if they're lucky and when they do get out, all right, there's absolutely no guarantee of knowing when they'll be back out again afterwards and there's also no guarantee that someone isn't going to jump into the swim right behind them. Why is this important with saving money and bait? Well we've all been in that scenario where we've been out on a session and we've maybe over egged the amount of bait that we need. Now in this circumstance I'm talking about boys specifically. A lot of the more mainstream day tickets that we have across the UK nowadays are putting rules in where you're only allowed to fish with freezer baits, right? They don't like shelf life for obvious reasons. Now, we're not going to get into the debate about that today as I am not a bait expert and there are a lot of other people that know a lot more about the difference between shelf lives and frozen than myself. But what I do know is that in order for you to be able to fish these complexes, all right, you have to go with the rules and you have to fish frozen baits. The drama is, if you're like me, once the bait has been um, defrosted and it's been on the bank for 24, 48, 72 hours, which is your atypical session that your regular day ticket angler would undertake over the course of a weekend, all right? You don't want to refreeze those baits purely because you don't want to damage the quality. A lot of baits don't refreeze well. And also, I'm not a particular fan of air drying baits afterwards. I think a lot of, a lot of the quality and a lot of the attraction that goes into those baits are in the fact that they're still kind of moist and a bit damp and a bit pliable to touch. I think as soon as you dry those baits out, even if you soak them again afterwards, they're never quite the same. So this is something that I've taken to doing when I fish my day ticket waters for these videos, which allows me to keep bait for the next time I go out. It also means that I'm saving money, which is the most important thing. The second caveat that I want to make on this video, what this will do is it will transfer the cost saving to other areas of your bait. Now, pretty much every angler out there nowadays either uses some form of bag mix, stick mix, ground bait to complement what they're feeding. What we do now with this video is we'll take the physical form of a boilie, that nice round thing that you're all um, far too familiar with, and uh, it changes it but it means that you maintain that quality of the bait, the attractor levels, and it also means that you're able to apply it in a different way. Finally, this also means that if you've been on a good session and you're absolutely having it off with a certain baiting technique, all right, when it comes to the end of the session, that final night, maybe that final evening, you don't have to absolutely fill your spot in and potentially risk changing the fishing scenario, ruining your chance of continuing on with that session. This will allow you to continue fishing the same way you have been to success during that session, all right, and then have something left over for the next time that you're able to go out. So without further ado, if you're new to the channel, then please like, subscribe, share all of that good stuff. All right? We're on Instagram, line underscore bites underscore YT. And I'm also now on Facebook as well. So if you just simply uh, search at line bites, I will come up and uh, yeah, you'll be able to find me keeping uh, in touch with what I'm doing when I'm not on the bank and more importantly get in touch with me if you've got any questions. It's been about 24 hours now since I was on the bank and I was finishing the final part of my winter campaign which will be available the week after next on this channel so please tune in. When I'm coming towards the end of that session I realised that I was going to have maybe two or three kilos of boilies left over that I wasn't going to have use for. Now when I go out onto the bank if I'm using freezer baits 
what I'll tend to do is I'll tend to soak them in lake water so they're very soft and they really aren't going to freeze well. I'll also keep some baits that I haven't been using in the um, soaked water that I won't spot out or use a throwing stick for um, and they were also defrosted by the end of that session. Now two or three kilos of boilies I don't want to refreeze those because like I said I don't think it does the quality of the attraction of the boilies any good. I also don't like air drying them. With the boilies that I've been soaking in water all right same again, I don't want to refreeze those because there's absolutely no reason for it. Same with the uh, air drying them. They've lost a lot of that attraction in the water itself. So we're going to look at how else we can make those boilies equally as attractive, but in another form. So what we're going to do is we're going to flick back to the filming that I was doing yesterday and, and talk you through the first stages of preparing this bait. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those boilies that we've been using we're going to turn them into either a solid bag mix or a stick mix, however you choose to apply it, or alternatively, a nice coating for the next time you go out onto the bank that you can coat your baits in. So, let's head back to yesterday and uh, we'll crack on with this video. So, first things first, when we come to the end of a session, all right, normally we'll have a bit of bag mix left over maybe, or some pellets. Now, what I do is I take that bag mix, or those pellets, as you can see here, and I put it into an empty bucket. Right, this is going to act as the base for the stick mix. If you don't have any um, bag mix or micro pellets left, don't worry, it doesn't matter. You can do this exactly the same, just without it. I'm just using it because I've got it at the moment. So firstly, you put your base if you've got one in there. Next, all we're going to do is we're going to take these boilies and we're going to just crush them either in a crusher or by hand like I'm doing now. Right, what we want is, we just want them nice and coarse, right? nice and smushed. You don't need them uh, to be whole. in my case by hand today and uh, yeah once I've done that I'm gonna give it a good mix around with my stick mix. I've got the washed out boilies in here the 18 millers that I'm just not going to use so all I'm doing is simply crushing them up by hand and adding them into that mix. A lot of these day ticket lakes or club water you fish it's almost impossible to bait a zone in or bait a few zones and guarantee that no one's going to be fishing it next time you come or no one's going to have spotted a load of bait out on it yourself so I like to try and rather than bait a spot if, I'm, if I know I'm going to be contesting with other anglers give myself an advantage in another way and create my own stick mix So, for this next bit of the preparation, we've got our bait out of the freezer, and for this, what I'm wanting to do is create a really fine stick mix or bag mix that I can add liquid to later on, or I can use to coat um, my boilies with liquid in, um, if I'm fishing, just scattered bait approach. Um, so for this next bit, it's actually probably a bit easier if you live with um, a partner, wife, girlfriend, whatever it is, um, that you are seeking forgiveness rather than permission. Now the reason I say this is because in my case I'm having to take my missus fine little Nutribullet uh, Nutri blender that she uses for her morning smoothies and protein shakes and to be honest if you don't clean them properly afterwards as I've found out in the past she kind of gets a bit pissy when uh, her nice smoothie that she's created first thing in the morning uh, tastes a bit like fish meal or krill or whatever you've put through it so yeah I keep quiet, use this first, and then apologize afterwards, or just cover your tracks and really clean it properly. So, once we've, um, we're happy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start blending this now. It'll be slightly sticky just because it's frozen at the moment, but once um, once we move on to the next stage and you actually see what I've, um, what I've done, you'll see how fine it becomes, and then we've got one more stage that we go through just to refine that even more. So, let's get it blended. Ooh. Turn the power on first, always helps. It's a bit stuck together, but it does crumble away nice and fine. Well, that was a close one. I um, just burnt out the Nutribullet engine, but I've given it 20 minutes now and it's calmed down, so crack on. Once you've uh, gone through all of your bait, you'll be left with this crumb like this. And you'll notice that because it's obviously been frozen, there is still a bit of moisture in there, but it's made it easier to blend. So what we do now is 
but we're going to put this in the oven. Now I've actually been preheating an oven for the last 40 minutes whilst I've been doing this um, and yeah I've been keeping it on 100 degrees and every five or so minutes from the point that I put this into the oven I'll just give it a bit of a mix around and the idea for this is we just want to um, we just want to basically um, get rid of all of that moisture that's still remaining in, in these bits. Here's one I made earlier. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep on moving that round and you'll be able to feel as the moisture's drawing out of it, um, as it becomes finer and finer and it becomes less clumpy. So I'm just going to spin that round a bit. Grab a bit of salt, this will help draw some of the moisture out and it also adds to the attraction. So we'll just layer that on there like that and then give it a bit more of a spin round as you can see like that. But you can see how fine and coarse that is now. It's turning into the perfect bag mix. So happy with that. We'll put it in for another 10 minutes and uh, then see how it's getting on. Now I do this process about three or four times um, until I've got the absolute texture that I'm happy with. Right then, so once you're content that that is as you want it and it's nice and dry throughout, which this now is, we're going to just put it into the bait bucket and then leave it to cool. I'm really happy with the way that that stick mix has uh, come out. It's taken me a bit of a refining process and it'll probably take you a bit of experimentation as well. But I've got something that I'm really happy with that saved me money because it saved me money on buying stick mixes and bag mixes and uh, also method mixes as well. Um, and it means that I'm also not wasting the bait, um, having to throw it away or unnecessarily ruin a swim by overfeeding it. So if you've enjoyed this episode, Please remember to like, share and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you do with your spare bait and uh, any other ingenious methods that you've come up with for saving money on the bank. If you're on the bank watching this, tight lines, wet nets and uh, yeah, from me and the cat, I'll see you out there on the bank at some point soon.